Good afternoon and welcome to our very popular LMP Event Sound Forum podcast. As always, my name is Ben Coates. That will never change, I promise you that. And as always as well, I am joined by Mr. Positivity, Mr. Paul Sound Guy Spicer. Good afternoon, Paul. Good afternoon, Ben. Now, no matter how I host or how I introduce today, I'm under pressure because we are joined by the professional. Today, we have Mr. Richard Jackson from Birmingham Toastmasters. Good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon, Ben. Hello, Paul. So, we're not overshadowed. Richard has a really fascinating story. So rather than me and Paul ask questions, we're just going to sit here and listen to the fascinating story from Richard. We'll come back in at some point. I do promise our listeners that. But Richard, over to yourself. Okay, well, yesterday I did pop something up on the, on the group about my starting in Toastmastering corporate life working my neck off uh, as we all do in corporate life. In fact, in our own businesses too. And as you get older, it gets tougher, trust me. I'm 72 now, so nearly 73 actually in a couple of weeks. You carry on because your brain tells you you're 26, doesn't it? In corporate life, I was uh, running a group of body shop. Well, for the largest group in the UK, actually. I got cancer in 2001, as I said yesterday. And then when they were checking me out to take the kidney out, they found that I'd torn the heart open. And so that was a bit of a blow. And we just sort of had to get some positive uh, mental state on and get cracking and sort it out. So we did that. It took me out of work for just about six months, five or six months. Then I was ready to go back fighting and back on the street, covering from top of Scotland to tip of Cornwall, across to Kent coast. And eventually started getting tired. So by the time I'd been, you know, this I'm back into action fairly soon, really. So I started getting more tired every year. And I was at first thinking it was old age creeping in. I had a word with the boss and um, basically I transferred across from group to running a Rover dealership, which to be fair, thinking back, he did say it could change my career. But being the sort of positive person I am, I thought it was for, you know, for the future. I thought, I thought actually we were going to own Rover, but there you go. So after a bit of that, Rover went bust and, uh, and I was made redundant. So what do you do? I mean, I used to set up their annual conferences for that group and sort of fancied going into that business. So I started looking around to be a Toastmaster. Just one of those things, fancy doing that. I could go into various groups, training, and cost me a lot of money. And then I came across a chap in Birmingham who offered, just for a small fee, really, to go out with him and he trained me. And he'd been going for years. Gave me his folders. And after two weeks, said, right, you good enough to carry on and uh, have a go. So I went along to the uh, Forest of Arden uh, wedding fair. You know, I don't know whether you remember those days when you went out to do your first gig, but blimey, <laughs> absolutely petrified. Then got from that little wedding of 48 people at the Forest of Arden. And uh, in the corner was this um, Asian couple, Hindu couple, who wanted me to do the same as I'd done that day for their wedding. But they didn't tell me until later. It was 340 people. So even more nervous for that one. And I got to like it, to get quite good at it. Started getting a few... Uh, Asian weddings, bigger weddings, and then some corporates came along, CBI came along and started doing the ICC and started doing various VIP star performers and met some of the so-called stars that you see on TV and you think, oh my God. But it was good fun. I carried on until 2012, which would be like the 10 years after I was first diagnosed with cancer. It came back big time and they shoved me on um, chemotherapy in January 2013 and told me, to be a good lad, work hard, but I've only got two years left. I, I'm not having that. And I decided that I've got to do something about it. And don't ask me why, but I signed on for a two-year nutrition course. Bear in mind, I've got to complete this course before I pop the clogs. And I start to find out things about us, about the food chain, about a lot of things in that come from various universities around the globe that I was speaking to scientists all over the place. I carried on trying to do the weddings. Well, I was still doing weddings and been quite ill with the chemo so it's, <laughs> you had to keep uh, being, being the ever professional keep running out when you're sort of uh, not feeling well uh, make some sort of phased disappearance act and go out and sort yourself out and come back in smiling carry on with the wedding and some of them were really long I mean you where know, some of these Asian weddings are I get there about eight o'clock in the morning finish like eight nine o'clock at night so they're quite long 
I started to find out things about me, about cancer, about health generally, about all of us, what's lacking in the bodies, what's lacking in food, why illness is on the increase, why cancer research and people like that are telling us, you know, one in two of us are going to get in our lifetimes, which is true. That led me into setting up another business, which was health, in developing that with supplements, particularly vitamins and minerals. I then bumped into a group of scientists in the States, drew me into a company called Pharmanex, which was the health side of a company called New Skin, which is beauty. So I suddenly found myself in health and beauty, and you can tell how good looking I am. You see, I'm still 26, really. It's just hard to get rid of. Coming back to the, the industry, we've all suffered the hotel thing, and I know there's one or two trying to get back on. In fact, I've um, had a message from Crown Plaza this morning saying, you know, they're desperately trying to put something together. I don't know whether anybody else has heard anything, but they want to get back. Places like the Belfry are obviously back on with the golf and booking in, trying to get back. And of course, the 4th of July, the end of the week, we'll see what happens. That's where I am now. I am a Toastmaster, Master of Ceremonies, and I have a health and beauty business. I'm not too worried about not doing too much toast mushroom. I learned a lesson, I suppose, that uh, one needs to perhaps diversify a little bit, not put all the eggs in one basket. So that's what I've done. I don't really know where to start. Why are you still here is the key question. We're so glad you are because obviously, you know, you offer so much to the country. But why are you still here? I mean, two, two years, eight years ago, it's, it's a remarkable story. It was a horrible day, that's for sure, because um, after the 10 years, they check you out all the time through the first 10 years. And what I learned was when as soon as they told me to come back, it was the heart surgeon that told me to come back after his 10 years checking. And I realized after then talking to a, quite a number of specialists all over the world, really, unless you change your lifestyle and habits instantly, you're in trouble. And people were telling me that. And after about four or five experts had told me that, I thought, well, I've got to do it. So the first thing was to stop sugar instantly. And I used to have sugar in tea, but not much. And, but I like sugary things, sweets. When I was on the road for the motor group, I was getting through um, M&Ms and Mars bars and, you know, junk generally on the road, as we all do. So I stopped all that, started looking at some stuff I got from the World Health Organization, which was about how much uh, fruit and veg we should eat to maintain our an antioxidant levels. And, and the fistful being one portion, the five portions is now actually 12 to 15 portions a day we should be consuming to make up for the, the lack of vitamins and minerals that have been coming through the food since 50s when the apple a day kept the doctor away. Well, now you need to eat 26 apples a day to keep the doctor away. <laughs> How could you do that? I mean, I like apples, but there's no way you can do that. So that drew me then into talking to various scientists about supplements and what supplements we'd need. There was a professor in Germany, which learned an awful lot about that, and it woke me up. So I just focused on staying alive. And you can. Whoever's listening, this would be great. Puts everything into perspective, really, when you think about it. Are you on the shielded list or anything, Richard? I, I did shield for 12 weeks and then um, started going out and seeing family. But, uh, Saturday, opening the pubs up on Saturday. Let's say they do get the restaurants and pubs open or have a few small parties. A bit of alcohol changes people's distance. It's like the picture, I think, that uh, Paul put up yesterday, or was it today? I don't know. I've lost the track mm. of time. With the party in France, you know, 2,000 mm. people at the... The outdoor event, really, but when you look closely, there's no less than even one meter. Some of them, they're sort of, you know, arm in arm, and there you go, a bit of champagne and who's who. So, is the Toastmaster career over then, Richard? Is it, or is it, no. or is it? Are you looking to go back in a different way? Well, one or? of the thing, one of the things it has done actually, uh, because I we've got a college in Birmingham that started off with when I joined it a few years ago now. Yeah, I've been going 15 years. 14 years ago, I joined the college. There was 16 people in it. And then it slowly dripped away because people are generally quite old as Toastmasters, aren't they? Most of the ones you come across are in their 60s or 70s, some 80s. And they're giving up. And, and this has really frightened a number of them. So we're down, we're down to six now in our college. One of the things I've put up on the website is um, to recruit to recruit Toastmasters, to recruit Master of Ceremonies, to recruit somebody that will host award ceremonies and things like that. I'm always looking for people that, them they want to go out and run the event because that's what we do technically we run we run it don't we we sort of uh, 
control the event, the timekeeping and everything else that goes on. And you say the Asian market is a very strong market for yourself. Why is that? Big numbers, you see. So, you know, my largest uh, event has been 1,750 at uh, the Rico Arena, which is it's a lot for a wedding. It's not for a you know, concert or something like that, but it is for a wedding. Yesterday I said I'd got three left, one late August, and anyway, that's gone. And it's gone, it's moved to next year. So now I'm just in October and December. Those are the, my last two. There were going to be a couple for September, but as soon as things started to happen, they, they decided to move to next year. But yeah, I think it's, uh, it's going to get tough. It's a very low market, the Asian market, isn't it? They'd like to deal with who they know, don't they, Richard? They do. They do. And um, it's a big market, though. To, uh, my, my weddings now, 75% or more are, are Asian. That's amazing, really. And I do quite a lot at the Belfry. Which are, and the, the other thing is that people have said, haven't they, that they'll hold weddings and stuff like that, but unfortunately can't do the reception. You know, the weddings you can now now to 30 guests, close family and friends. But that's it. It is literally the ceremony and that's it. So yeah. people have got the choice. They can either postpone everything till next year or they can run the ceremony now and have a party either later in the year or whenever they're allowed to have a party next year or whatever. Or it's a case of, I don't know, so some people have said, oh, well, the wedding's off, unfortunately. Yeah. That's nothing to do with the coronavirus, it's just they've had enough for each other. Oh yeah, they probably had an argument. They probably had an argument about how much the cake was going to cost, or something. Some people will do the wedding still, I think, and have smaller yeah. numbers at the wedding just to comply, and then probably on the village green or somewhere else in the park have a bit of a party. Yeah, I think it comes down to people saying, "Oh, I wouldn't understand why you would do that," but some people do have smaller families. It's really down to them what they want, and if it's the fact that the wedding is really important to them and the party afterwards isn't but it means they've got their friends and family around them for that, for that thing, then why not have the ceremony now? Yeah. Because they're allowed to. So I, I think it's, it's down to the individuals. That they've got that yeah, option now and they can choose, can't they? Yeah, they can. And I mean, hopefully most of the venues will be very guarded. They'll work within the law, won't they? Be on their own side yeah, of the well, staff. That, yeah, that's the key. That's the key of everything we discuss is safety. It's always fascinating. I know people that have been listening to this sort have been gripped. The remarkable resilience you've obviously shown and your awareness of, of what the future holds for you. You have to believe that, don't you? You think you're aware. <laughs> yeah. I've, never, I've never been anything else, really, but blimey. When people tell you, you say, and, and the real strange thing is I didn't feel, when the guy told me about the heart, it was quite funny, really, because I was just about to have the kidney out and the, they do the pre, pre-op tests, you know, and he said, he said, uh, have you had any pains in the chest or anything? I said, no, I've had no pain. Right, okay. So any, any aches in the shoulders or the left arm? I said, no. Why are you asking me that? He said, you don't think you've had a heart attack, do you? I'm a bit of a... So I sort of grabbed my chest and went, oh, you mean... Oh. My wife was there as well, so she told me to behave myself. He said, do you think you've had a heart attack then? I said, no, 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 definitely not. Why? He said, you haven't got a heartbeat. So I said, well, so I burst out laughing there. I said, well, I'm talking to you, so how can I not have a heartbeat? And he got his stethoscope and stuck it on my ears and said, listen... And I listened and there wasn't a heartbeat. <laughs> it was just like, um, it was just a bit of sort of sound. And that was it. I said, well, what happens now? He said, I went to take a seat. I'm going to bring in a specialist. So I never even got out of that little meeting for another hour and a half, two hours. You have to have faith in people then, don't you? They know what they're doing. And you have to just have faith in yourself that you can get out of this and uh, find a way out of it. If, you, if you're positive enough. And that's the difficulty I've been helping. This year so far, I've helped uh, 17 people that are on being diagnosed with cancer. And last year, it was just uh, 27 people last year, of which uh, I only know where three of those people are now. I don't know where the others are. Some, some listen, some don't. And this is life. Some people will, some people won't. I spoke to one guy last year who said to me, you're joking. I've got to give up sugar. I've got to give up. That means I've got to give up alcohol. I've got to give up. That's and you've got to give up everything. You've got to stop all that. Well, I don't see how he can do that. I said, well, you've got to remember your body's changed. You're not in a, a, an okay state. You're not in an alkaline state. You've gone into an acidic state. You've got to get that back. If you don't, you're not here. Simple. He objected and objected, objected, and I haven't heard from him since. It's a sad thing. On the other hand, there's other people doing really well, really well. 
it's catching it it's knowing it blokes us blokes are the worst aren't we because you know you get a twinge or an ache or something like that and yeah i walk it up i won't lift any chairs i'll blame somebody else you know <laughs> whatever it is <laughs> yeah i've had tw- i've had 12 knee ups over life so yeah it has been I love oh, the have you? yeah you're a sportsman then I was about about three stone ago. I was Richard about three stone ago. Yeah. Sports does 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 take its toll. At the time you don't think so, do you? But you know this is where your twenty six year old brain, when it gets older in the body, the body gets older. Your brain says, "I wish I hadn't have done that so much." Though. I wish I hadn't. I've enjoyed this afternoon. It's been a pleasure to listen to you, Richard. Just before we come off the podcast, Paul, do you want to do your round up just so as we before we go out to people? Know where we're at regards events, and probably the same place as last week, aren't we? Confused. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, thank you, Ben, and uh, thank you for sharing, sharing the story, Richard. No, really thank you for the opportunity. It. So, yeah, just a very, very quick summary. We're no further forwards. Uh, obviously, when we did this podcast last week, uh, the government announced about the hospitality industry opening up on Tuesday. Want to find out more? Go check out the Zoom call that we did last week. Obviously, since then we had the petition that went out, which didn't unfortunately achieve anything in Parliament. They put out a roadmap, which frankly, uh, not my words, but other people's words were said, is about as useful as a game of snakes and ladders with no dice. There's some interesting developments. However, there are numerous other petitions going out. Uh, Please do check the forum. Well, there's some gone out today uh, and there's some going out uh, over the next few days, Thursday, Friday. Please do get involved. Please do look. There's other movements. They're trying to get stuff. I know ESSA are pushing a big thing to get a meeting with Rishi Sunak to basically say, this country's losing ridiculous amounts, millions, billions in the events industry. You're not really paying attention to us, so please do. So again, we'll report on all that sort of stuff. So there's not really any new news since last week, but just keep your eyes peeled, people. If you listen to this podcast, please do check out all the news stories and check out the petitions, get involved. We'd greatly appreciate it because it helps not only the people in this group, but all the other people who are stuck in events industry right now. That's all I've got to say. Thank you, Ben. Well, you've just filled a gap in my diary. I mean, I've got the events this weekend, which I'm really looking forward to. But in between, yeah. uh, we're now going to have a game of socially distant snakes and ladders without a dice. And on that note, <laughs> <laughs> on that note, thanks everyone for listening. Richard, thank you for joining us here. Thank stay, you. Thank you. Stay, stay safe, you, everybody. Stay safe and healthy, please, Richard. You've had yes. enough going on over the last few years. <laughs> yeah. And Mr. Spicer, thank you as ever. You're a gent. Always a pleasure. Thank you.